I am honored and humbled to introduce the man who's paved the way to make all of this possible. The Secretary General of the United Nations has long been a leader on this issue. In 2008, he launched his Unite to End Violence Against Women campaign, the global campaign aimed at raising awareness and political will to prevent and end all forms of violence against women in all parts of the world. The campaign has brought together the UN system and the people around the world from all walks of life, united in action and in orange against the global scourge. It is something for which we are all deeply admirable. It's a game-changing legacy for the Secretary General. So please welcome Secretary General of the United Nations, Ban Ki-moon. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for your commitment. I'd like to thank, first of all, Juju Chang uh, for her time with us all the times. She's a very, very busy person working on matter of seconds all the times. <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your always availability and uh, commitment for uh, this very important cause. Uh, Your Excellency uh, Ambassador Karel van Oosterum, Oosterum, permanent representative of the uh, Netherlands, uh, Ms. Fumzile Umlambo Nkuka, Executive Director of UN Women, Ms. Juju Chang, distinguished guests, dear colleagues and friends, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure to join you today. Since this will be my last observance uh, this day, Orange Day, as the Secretary General, I want to thank all of you for a decade of remarkable global activism towards to ending violence against women and girls. I'll try to participate in Korea, mm -hmm. and I'll be with you in spirit uh, in the future. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, you have defended the vulnerable and fought impunity. The United Nations and I personally uh, have stood with you. This is truly a matter of life and death. In some countries, as many as 70% of women report having experienced physical or sexual violence from an intimate partner. In some countries, intimate partner violence accounts for between 40 and 70% of female murder victims. The statistics almost defy belief. What is even harder to understand is why. Why men prey on women and girls? Why societies shame the victims? And why governments fail to punish deadly crimes? And why the world denies itself the fruits of women's full participation? The world cannot afford to pay this price. Women and girls cannot afford it and should not have to. I have tried to put the full UN machinery behind our efforts to rid the world of violence against women and girls, including through UN Women, the UNITE campaign, the network of men leaders, and my own constant advocacy. At long last, we are seeing a growing global recognition that violence against women and girls is a human rights violation, public health pandemic, and serious obstacle to sustainable development. Yet, there is still much more we can and must do to turn this awareness into meaningful prevention and action. These efforts are chronically underfunded. I call on governments to show their commitment by dramatically increasing national spending in relevant areas, including in support of women's movements and civil society organizations. I also encourage world leaders to contribute to UN Women and to the UN Trust Fund to end violence against women. We look as well to the private sector, philanthropists, and concerned citizens to do their part. I have seen much horror during the past 10 years, but I have also seen great heroism and resilience by women risking their lives in the fight for human rights and by girls reclaiming 
their lives following unspeakable attacks. Some of the most Im impactful and inspiring moments of my entire term as a Secretary General occurred in the context of our struggle for women's empowerment. I will never forget my conversation with girls and women at the Heal Africa Hospital in Goma, DRC. And I will always remember my meetings with one of the world's great advocates, Malala Yousafzai. I thank everyone who has joined to support this vital cause, including you here in this room. Uh, today, we are seeing the world lit up in orange, symbolizing a bright future for women and girls. With the investments and political will, we can keep these lights shining for good. Thank you very much.